a business owner. I own a construction company. I build residential homes um, and things like that. And I have also have a four year business management degree. Uh, there's a few things I've learned the business, my business, uh, the ins and outs of it over the years, obviously through college and experiencing it hands on. And I've also learned a lot about the beach body business through watching Mariah go through the processes and being uh, part of the team calls, going to summit, things like that. And um, there's a few things that carry over from one business to another. There's some general business practices that I feel like um, I wanted to cover and hope that uh, I can help you out to run a successful business. Um, so, let me share my screen here. All right, let's get down to business. The first step is understanding that you are a business owner. If you are a Beachbody coach, you own a company, you're a business owner, uh, you're a CEO, you're everything, every all the above. You are in charge, and this also means that you own the responsibility of the success of your company, whether that's the growth of your company, whether that's any failures, whether that's <clears throat> uh, you know skyrocketing through the air with this thing. I mean, you have so much potential to grow this business into quite a major earning company. And you have to understand first and foremost that what you're doing is owning a business. Um, first step, you need to have a mission statement. As everybody hammers on it in the Beachbody world, it is a why. If you don't have a why, you don't really know what your purpose is. Why are you doing this? What drives you? What keeps you going? It's a map to your success. It tells you everything that you need to do in order. And also, it has you, gives you something to fall back on if you get down or you, lost, if you get lost. You have something to look at and say, oh, okay, this is why I'm doing this. This is why I own my business is so that I can help people, that I can share that Shakeology is the best drink in the world, that getting fit can bring so much positivity to your life and that there's so many great people out there that you can meet. Whatever your why is will keep you going throughout the history of your company, really. Bring value to what you're doing. Um, I really think that it's important to share your results, uh, mainly for showing that you are part of this, that you own it. Um, in my company, uh, if somebody wants ideas on something for me to build, I can show them 40,000 Pinterest pictures or pictures on house or things like that and say, yeah, I can do this, but unless they see pictures of things that I've actually done, projects that I've actually completed, they don't really know what I can do. And it brings a lot more value to my business and my company when I can show exactly what I do and what I'm capable of doing. It acts almost like a warranty because if you, you then you can tell people, look, these are the steps that I follow, these are the things that I did, and these are the results that I got. If you do all these things, you can get results too. It may be individual to your company and to you to you in the, to you as an individual, but they will get results, they will see changes, and they can better their lives as well. If it isn't locked in, it didn't happen. Um, one thing that I hear a lot of people talk about is, well, you know, so-and-so is going to sign up on Friday after they get paid. Or um, next month after my kid gets his braces off, I'll have the money to sign up and I'll be able to do this. Or, you know, there's all kinds of different reasons why people delay and they keep putting it off. The important thing is, is never lose your momentum. If somebody hasn't signed up, it didn't happen. If it's going to happen soon, it didn't happen yet. You can't keep saying, okay, well, I have, you know, six, I'm at SC6, 
and I'm shooting for 10. And I have these couple people who are going to sign up next Friday, so I'm good for the month, and I can just back off a little bit. That's not the case because it didn't happen yet. You never know. You could end up going to the next week, and they could say, well, now this has happened, so it's going to be later. You've lost your momentum, and then you miss out on getting yourself to SE10, which is your goal for the month. Don't get comfortable with what you have. That's another thing is just because you have it now doesn't mean that next month or next year you'll still have it. If you have some top, some top coaches underneath you who are currently at Diamond and you just put all of your eggs in that one basket that you're only going to focus on those people all the time and never recruit new people, what happens if those diamonds drop? Your rank drops as well. You can't get comfortable with what you have. Just an example to put all of these things together. Um, a little bit about some history, some things that I've gone through. I put all my eggs in one basket. I had a massive project going where I knew that I was going to be there for a year. I knew it, right? Well, one thing led to another. The bills kept racking up. And before I knew it, I had a customer that owed me over $250,000. I had no other projects lined up. I had no work to run to, but I couldn't keep driving myself into debt over this project. So I had to shut it down. Like I said, when I shut it down, I didn't have anywhere to go. I had to start from scratch at that point. I had to start digging for work. I had to line up projects. And the biggest problem with that was I had a huge lag time with employees under me and everything else. And it's not like you can just hit the ground running. You have to get yourself out there all over again. You have to let people know that you are available all over again. By losing my momentum, I basically had to build my business from scratch all over again. The following year, I had the worst year that I have ever had in my company's history. I always had it in the back of my mind that this big project may open back up and I'd be able to go on to that. So I didn't really try that hard because I always thought, well, I'll take on a few projects, but I've got this big one coming up. So I'll just, uh, I'll just kind of hang back a little bit because it's going to happen soon. It never happened last year. So I had the worst year, worst year in my company's history. I still had to keep on going as if my business was starting from scratch. And I told myself I was not going to do that again. So with this year, it's a fresh year. I put everything I had into it. I got myself out there. I got a lot of new customers and I never even let the idea of this other project opening back up enter my mind. Now, I have so much going on that I'm turning down work. I have booked into the following year. I'm off to a fantastic start. Things are, are constantly going up. I'm already above where I was last year. And that's the difference between planning on those things that may happen soon and just looking, and just looking past them pushing past all elements to make sure that you drive forward. Because if it isn't locked in, it didn't happen. If I haven't had a customer hand me a signed contract, I can't count it as a project that I'm going to do during that year. I need to make sure that I have a backup plan and I have another, another project to fill that slot. Another important aspect of owning a business is setting business hours and sticking to them because you can't forget about your family. It doesn't matter whether it's as simple as I'm not going to do any business when we're all sitting at the table eating supper, or I'm not going to do any business when I'm getting ready for bed and my husband wants to talk to me. You know, something as simple as that because you need to think about your family. Your family is one of your biggest areas of support and you want to have them behind you all the time. 
And if you keep neglecting them, then they aren't going to be as supportive in what you're doing. It's important when you are setting business hours to find <clears throat> times that best work that work best for your schedule. Whether that means that you only work in the mornings before your family gets up, or you think about how times can benefit your business, like say between 8 and 10 p.m. when a lot of people are online. That's a great time to be having conversations with people because everybody has time. They're winding down from their day. They can discuss things with you. And most people have, have gotten through their family time. The kids are in bed, yada, yada. And you don't want to burn yourself out by being attached to it all the time. When you're a business owner, it's on your mind 24-7. It's your life. It's what you do day in, day out, all the time, constantly. And you have to remember that you need a break from it. Your mind will go into overdrive, you'll burn yourself out, and then you won't be as productive on the other end. You need to give yourself a break once in a while. Another thing that I feel like is an important thing is having a separate bank account. If you have a business bank account, you're able to track your profits easier. You're able to see the money that's going into that one account rather than just into the general flow of your personal account. This means that you're keeping your business assets separate and you're able to see financial growth within your company. This, for a lot of people, their goals may not be financial, but this is a this is a, a good way, if you are financially driven, to set new goals, to project your business further when you see the numbers in that bank account growing. Also, it can help you stick to some goals. If you find that one goal may be that you want to be able to pay your cell phone bill every single month. If you have your cell phone bill automatically withdrawn from that account, every single month, you know that you have to keep that amount of money in there at all times or your phone's gonna get shut off. If your phone gets shut off, well, instant messenger is gonna be awfully hard to use. So another thing is when you keep your bank account separate, it's another good way to own your business and have it be a company. All of your large companies have separate bank accounts. Um, nobody, should. <laughs> if you have a large company, you do not keep flowing all of your money into your personal account at all times. On another note, when it comes time, if you're big enough, if you, if it comes time to do taxes at the end of the year, it's a lot easier to track what you've spent and what you've done with your business assets that you can do for tax write-offs and things like that. So. That's actually, that's actually it. I thought I was going to run over because I generally like to talk quite a bit, but apparently that wasn't the case. Are there any questions? Great job, Matt. Thank you. I actually had about five more slides, but uh, I like to talk. I thought I was going to run about, I don't know, a half hour over, so I deleted them. <laughs> I can find some other stuff to talk about, really, but. <laughs> um, yeah, Katie, make more time for her husband, set up separate bank accounts, yada, yada, yada. This is great. Business hours, I'm working on that.
just going to look here at some more of my notes. Dude, I think it was a great call, especially considering we're going away to the summit and everybody's super busy. It was on point and you had a lot of good tips. And, um, I appreciate you jumping on here and doing a call. I mean, how many people do you see that are unsupportive spouses that turn super supportive spouse because they're now doing team calls? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a transition, huh? Transformation. Slightly. We like you better this way. <laughs> Um, you know, actually another note that I had here, um, was the importance of one thing that I do quite a bit in my business is I'm always checking in with other contractors. You know, we don't run a partnership, but we're always checking in on what's working, what's not working, um, trying to get an idea of the, uh, demographic that seems to be coming forward and having more work done trying to see where we should shift our focus and things like that. And I think that that in a way correlates with having a solid success club partner or success partner and to keep you guys in check and see what's working. It's, it's nice to have the team and have everybody there, but sometimes if you have that one person you can really talk to and say, Hey, this is working for me. Is it working for you? Um, and you know, having that more individual attention can sometimes make a huge difference as well. Yeah, and I think also too, as you become more and more of a leader on the team, I think that, you know, it's important to point out that a lot of your conversations end up being with those that are just in your downline. And so it's like, it's important to find somebody else, like you said, like, that's like level with you you know, that, that understands really what you're going through. Like, I remember Katie messaged me after she'd gone through Five Star Qual, and she was like, okay, so <laughs> how are you doing with this qual? She's like, because I was doing this, 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 and that when I was going through qualification, and it, it is really true. You kind of want to check in with those that are equal partners to, like, what you're going through and ask them for ideas and see what's working and that sort of thing. That's not the point. Cool. Any other guys? Do you have anything else you want to add, Matt? No, I was just going to keep on going with what you were talking about. Oh, you can keep on keeping on with whatever you want to talk about. No, I was just going to say it's it's nice if you have a if you have somebody on a lateral playing field rather than like I don't talk to somebody who's got 135 employees and builds shopping malls. You know, I talk to a guy who is building houses the same size as me and has a company with just a few employees and things like that. Because a lot of times if I talk, if I were to talk to one of these, you know, big guns out there, they don't remember what it's like to only do two houses a year, or five renovations a year, or something like that. They, they don't even really know how to talk to me about it because it was so long ago since their company was at that level. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Ryan's laughing at you. Oh, yeah, I can see him. <laughs> Should we now all start asking Matt questions? We have 10 minutes. No, I'm just kidding. Like, about Matt, <laughs> not about the business. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mexico all over again. I know. <laughs> oh, no, My Kat's asking. Kat's asking. <laughs> My favorite color is blue. How many siblings does he have, Kat? <laughs> she's not answering. She doesn't know. She's, she's going to fail this year. Do I build? Well, actually, you know, let's, let's have the truth. I guess probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Are you done? I guess probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. By the, by the way, I'm wicked pumped for Summit. I know. See a lot of you there. And, you know, if you think of questions later, I'll be open for, you know, I can, I can set up comp personal conferences at Summit. We'll throw this recording up um, as well. You guys can comment or ask questions too in the comment section underneath that in the team page. But I did want to mention too, just before we jump off, I know a lot of people were like first timers at Summit. Some people have questions and things like that. 
Um, if you're not in that summit group already that we that we have for Project Fearless, like get added in there. And um, also, uh, I think that we should create a hashtag that our team can follow while we're there so that they can see what we're all up to and what's happening. And then there is a live stream of uh, the grand opening and celebration. So we'll make sure to post that as soon as I find that link too. Yeah, I like that cat. Um, and uh, anything else I'm missing? Oh, and get, get registered for Super Saturday ASAP. That's on July 7th. Um, Anita Myron, who is a 15 star diamond coach, millionaire earner, top 10 two time coach, um, is going to fly in and she's going to speak to us. She has a crazy story. And so I hope that she shares some of that with us and shares some of sort of um, the tough times and the good times with everybody so that they can see what it's really like to build this business and how it's helped her. Um, and so you definitely want to get there. And if you're not registered, get registered now. And if your people aren't registered, get your people registered because it's going to be an amazing event. That's all I can think of. Nice job, Matt. Still plenty of time in the month getting success done. Matt, you rock. Thank you so much. <laughs> <It> smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye.